everyone and welcome fellow bookworms and film fans welcome to this week's episode of the contented narrative where we will be looking at the house with a clock in its walls uh, this was written by john Bellarius. i think i said that right <laughs> probably not though um, it was published in 1973 it was then adapted to screen in 2018 now as normal we will be looking at three things so how good is the book how good is the film and how well does the plot take from the book so first things first the film now this film is delightful um i love the casting choices that it's got within it i love the storyline um it goes through looking at a young boy that's lost both his parents gets thrust with this uncle who's sort of like living in this magical world as it were and it's just it's really lovely to see that he kind of comes into his own being as it were and this little boy who's lost everything finds a family and finds love and acceptance and slowly realizes that he can be somebody else and he can be whoever he wants to be and he ends up becoming like a little little mage as it were which is quite cute it's it's the idea as well that he lives in a magical house <laughs> who doesn't want to live in a magical house where you literally just tell the chores to be done and they're done rather than putting a wash on and then realizing that actually you have to hang it up and then you have to put it away once it's dried it's just forever laundry but it's just so well done and it's well thought out and you also see how he tries to become friends with people and then he realizes that in actuality he's changing himself too much to try and be friends with someone who doesn't want to know him so then he stops and then he becomes friends with people that he wants to and at the end showing how he's been accepted and, and how he becomes part of that family again feeling that he would never have that is just absolutely lovely it's beautifully done as i said and it's so magical um, and i would definitely recommend this film to anyone it gets a seven out of ten for me now the book this book is such a nice little tale very similar to the film obviously um and it's always again it's about a kid trying to find its place now this apparently this book is a book in a series as well so this is only sort of the first book of the series i haven't read the rest i've only read the first one um now i do think <laughs> my only sort of thing is he raises someone from the dead pretty early on in the book and you'd, you'd think, surely you'd think that if you've raised someone from the dead and things start going wrong, you'd tell someone, like you'd tell your uncle um, or Mrs Zimmerman um, <laughs> to let them know that there is someone walking around that maybe shouldn't be. Um, but I love how Jonathan and Mrs Zimmerman just accept Lewis for who he is and tell Lewis to be who he is. And it's the same in the film as it is in the book. And it is just a case of if you want to be crazy, be crazy. If you want to do this, do this. You know and they're just so accepting of everything um but they they don't they, they still make him feel like he's loved as well so it's not a case of he's being ignored they're just going we trust you to do whatever so that's why i think maybe he should have told them he raised someone from the dead i did feel a little bit let down by the build up to the whole clock thing only for it to have been literally a clock to then to have been destroyed by someone smashing it on the floor um that build up felt a little bit sort of like building up the entire book you're like oh it's the whole premise of the story and then within a page it's like and the clock is smashed and everything's back to normal and i'm a little bit annoyed um but obviously i do understand that this book is for children so it might not have wanted to make the stakes too high and it might wanted to have a look at the fact that this clock although it's you know it's not that much of a build up for adults for children it's very satisfactory um so it's a great little story. Uh, you can read this one to your kids, as I've said through several uh, books that we have read in the past, or you can read it alone as an adult, because it was quite an enjoyable one. And I'd give the book again, it would get a seven out of 10 from me. So the plot, so they both start pretty much the same way. So Lewis is the little boy. He travels to a place called New Zebedee um, and meets his uncle Jonathan and his neighbor, Mrs. Zimmerman. Uh, and they live in a big house that's magical essentially. They spend the first night playing poker and eating cookies and just basically just getting to know each other. Um, also, Lewis also awakens in the middle of the night. He sees Jonathan listening at the walls of the house and doesn't quite understand why that might be. So two small differences he, at this point is school starts the next day in the film, but in the book, it's three weeks after. Um, and in the film, Lewis has an eight ball as well that he talks to, believing it to be his dead departed parents um, because it's the last thing that they gave him. This eight ball doesn't really ever surface in the book, as it were. Now, in the book, we find out about the previous inhabitant, Isaac Izzard, um, and that Jonathan is a warlock. Sorry, mage. I don't know why I said mage earlier. 
Lewis becomes a warlock. So um, Jonathan is a warlock and Mrs Zimmerman is a witch. Um, now we find this out a little bit earlier in the film than we do in the book. Um, sorry, we find it out earlier in the book than we do in the film. So now we're at school. Um, he is an outcast um, and he's he's not bullied, but they kind of just ignore him as it were until he meets Tarby. Now Tarby's the popular kid. He's got a broken arm. He's running for class president or whatever in the film but not in the book they seem to be quite good friends um so they kind of build that up now in the book lewis plans on showing tarby a magic trick by his uncle because obviously his uncle's a warlock um but in the film at this point lewis is taken on the studies to be a warlock um so tarby comes to the house in the book and jonathan performs a, br a brilliant magic uh, where he sort of like blocks the moon and he's got like loads of things going around in the grass and the garden and it's absolutely gorgeous brilliantly de like described um but in the book uh so sorry so in the film we see a beautiful trick from jonathan where he brings sort of the entire solar system to life but it's just jonathan mrs zimmerman and lewis so anyway, in the book, Lewis is searching through the magical books without Jonathan's permission, but in the film, he's allowed to look for all the books, but he's just not allowed to go into this one cupboard that's locked with a key, and Jonathan says that's one rule, do not go in that cupboard. Um, because this book that's locked in a cabinet raises the dead, and it was previous property of Isaac Gizzard as well. So, in the book, we then get this big sort of like raising from the dead necromancy um, af on Halloween night, uh, but in the film, it's just sort of after a normal school day. <coughs> in the book, he brings back Selina, who is Isaac's dead wife. In the film, he actually brings back Isaac. Um, so in the book, the then... So obviously, we've now brought to, back to life Selina slash Isaac. Um, and Lewis is a little bit worried and has decided not to tell anybody about it. Tarby's acting like it never happened. So then... Mrs Zimmerman and Jonathan realise that he's become quite withdrawn within himself. So they go out on a nice picnic and then as they're driving back they get chased by an unknown car uh, and when they get back home they realise that they've been, their house has been broken into. Um, and the person found what they were looking for as well which is a key for this clock that's ticking away in the hall, in the walls. Now in the film the house actually starts turning bad towards them um and jonathan actually has the key on him for this mysterious clock that we're not entirely sure what it does or where it is we just know it's in the wall somewhere so in the book sorry yeah so in in both sorry tarby has now fully ostracized lewis and is acting like he didn't ever exist he even at one point beats him up as well in the film which is a bit sad because she kind of sat the guy and oh poor lewis just wanted some friends um so in the book some neighbors of jonathan's move out and then a per someone moves in and they're not entirely sure who it is um but in the film it's the same older lady that lived in that house for years and, and still lives in that house there's not really any change there so at this point in the film lewis has now told jonathan what he did uh, which is bring back someone from the dead which has caused jonathan to cast him out and lose his temper he goes off running to mrs zimmerman jonathan realizes he's gone too far and tries to make things right with lewis but it also allows him at this point in the film to learn about the past with Mrs Zimmerman and what's happened. And this is where we find out about Isaac Izzard. Um, this is where we find out about everything, basically. Um, and also the house is slowly turning more dark and more sinister. This is happening in both as well. Like You can kind of see the changes in the book a little bit. In the film, it's more obvious. Now, however, in the film at this point as well, um, Isaac has accidentally let... Sorry isaac lewis has accidentally let isaac and selena into the house where they're able to then get the key from jonathan and then expel all three mrs zimmerman jonathan and lewis from the house so in the book it's a sheaf of papers found by lewis that hints at what isaac was trying to do in the film it's blueprints found by jonathan that lewis later decodes with a little decoder ring um from a like cereal box i don't quite understand that one but now in both, we know that the clock is in the walls and was made with the intention of bringing about the end of days, basically. So in the book, it's more that they are just going to destroy everything. In the film, it's turning everything back to the beginning, where Isaac and Selina are the only two human beings. So in the book, Lewis heads off to confront Selina on his own. 
brilliant idea because you know and it goes about as well as you could imagine because he has to be rescued by mrs zimmerman of course um in both however lewis ends up doing a ridiculous ceremony to find the entrance for the clock because he believes that if he does his own sort of like little magic he'll be able to find it and he does so they go off and they find the clock now in the book all three find the clock then selena arrives in the film selena and isaac have already found the clock and jonathan and lewis are the ones who then go forward to basically have the final showdown so in the book as i said the clock is destroyed by lewis just smashing it on the floor and that is it that's that selena and isaac disappear off the end of the world we never hear any more from them in the film however it's destroyed by lewis dropping the eight ball into the mechanism and then using electricity to take take care of selena and isaac basically he killed them but in both it ends with lewis making a new friend uh, which is a nice little girl um, and being part of a family with jonathan and mrs zimmerman and it is honestly absolutely beautiful now both narratives although they started the same and although they kind of dip back into each other throughout the narrative they are different um, the most basic plot is the same, but the, the penultimate sort of end to it, the, the build up to it, who they bring back from the dead and everything like that just isn't the same. Um, and so because the, two, the, the plot of the two different stories being told does differ quite a lot and only has the most basic points, uh, the plot itself gets a four out of ten from me. Now, obviously, you can agree or disagree with this however you like, if you leave below in the comments. If there's any book to film adaptations you'd like me to do, any book reviews that you'd like me to do, again, leave below in the comments. Um, don't forget to click subscribe and like so you're alerted whenever a new video becomes available. But until then, remember to always keep it contento.